Hello, Sir Chief in a backyard driving range. All right. Today we have a a question comes in from James Pappas Sr. And he goes, Serge, I've used a baseball grip all my life. Am I missing something? I don't think so, James. Or as he calls himself in the end, Jim in Pittsburgh. Jim, I don't think you're missing anything. I noticed in your grip video that you do not espouse an overlapping grip or any other type of grip. I take that to mean that you have no preference. That is pretty much close to correct as long as you maintain one major important thing about grip, which I'm going to cover in a minute. Everyone I, everyone I know uses the overlapping grip but me. Would you go over the different styles of grips and their attributes? Okay, first and foremost, all of these are completely covered in the, in the peak performance swing manual and, and in some of the very videos I talk about grip. And, and I've done other dailies on this, so you can find, uh, go up there in the search box and, and search grip, and you can find other dailies that I've done about grip. Now, your question is, is basically three grips. There's the 10 finger or baseball grip. The only difference would be that, that when we, most of us, when we 10 finger the grip, we're going to still keep the, the, thumbs on, the thumbs on the shaft, whereas with baseball, we'll have the thumbs wrapped around the shaft, okay? But, uh, but again, I've seen people play, I've had people with, uh, get a really bad thumb, they actually, they actually play with their, with their, I've seen people play with their left thumb off the club, their left or top arm hand off the club, all right? And, and you, gotta, you have to do what you do. Now, in my case, I've always believed that the, the, the grip should have, uh, be held in the palms. If you crimp your left finger, your left hand, you, you, you crimp it in the palm, and you, and, and you get the, the pad of the, pant of, the, of the hand on top at where it would be 12 o'clock on the butt of the club here and the thumb goes down at about one o'clock. Most people talk, are taught to, to grip the club at, with the thumb on top. That is close, but in true, in true essence, you're, if you're not in total uh, dynamic balance of your left hand, because if you notice, if you just have your hands hang here, where are your thumbs? Your thumbs are hanging away from that finger, and I've seen when most people, when they put their thumb on top, like this, and, and many pros don't want to see any gap between the thumb and, and, and the, the inside of the hand and the, and the index finger, but we, I do want to see a gap. Dr. Armstrong says your thumbs, just look at it. Your thumbs are hanging straight up in line with your forearm. So if you want to keep that in that dynamic balance position, when you take your grip, you should have it about somewhere the inside of your thumb, your, your, your left thumb or, or, or your right thumb if you're, if you're a right-hander, uh, a left-hander playing. The top thumb should be on the inside for a right-hander over, over to the right. The left thumb's over to the right. And, and when you, when you Crimp your fingers in, in the right hand and lay it in the crimp, and then and then put your thumb on it. It puckers up your thumb, puckers up your palm, and that gives you all the room you need for your thumb to be inside the hand here and not not be causing a problem. Because when you do this, as soon as you do that, you're going to see that 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 this thumb comes down in here and creates that that gap where your thumb will where your left your if for a right hander your left thumb will fit right in between and under your right thumb, and your right thumb goes over to about 11 or 10 or 11 o'clock on the other side so that the inside of it's touching. Now the difference with the grips is what? Do I want the 10 finger where all 10 fingers are on the, gra on the club, which is where uh, we would call that the, the baseball grip. Again, as I said, in golf we tend to leave both thumbs on the, somewhere on the top of the shaft, meaning the upper hand would be to one side and the lower hand would be to the other side where your hands are, where the palms, pointing, where the palms are pointing, correct? And, and you, could, you, could, you could have all 10 fingers. Now. The next major grip, the one that, that Jim said a lot about, was the, was the interlocking grip. Interlock means you, you raise your top, the, the index finger of your top hand, which me as a right-hander would be the left hand, and, and you slide the little finger in between it, and so now that's off the club, so that's why it's not a 10-finger grip. And, and interlocking is one of the two major grips. I think that probably there's more people using the overlap, which I'm going to cover in a minute, but these are the two major grips. And then, and then the rest of the grip, the right hand is exactly the same. Now the overlap will be the, the index finger of your top hand, again the left hand for me being a right hander, right hand for a lefty. You will take that index finger and instead of slipping it in between that finger, you will lay it in between, you will lay it on top, but in between the index and the middle, or, the middle finger, alright, and you lay it on top. And now 
One of the reasons why that most people use these, these, the interlock or the overlap is simply because by getting one finger closer together, we're getting our hands up closer together. In the 10 finger grip, there's, a, there's, the, there's kind of a big gap in here where there's a space where my right hand and left hand are, are, are separated and they're not as close. And that could cause a problem of, of the club you know, flipping over or, or, the, or the wrist breaking down where the left wrist with the top wrist could break down and, and, and pass it in which you could start chunking the ball and hitting pulls or whatever. Now, but Derek Hardy, who's a swing surgeon certified instructor and has taught numerous LPGA players and he has one of his greatest protégés was uh, when, when he was uh, the pro at Country Club of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina. He taught Beth Daniel from a little girl, and a little young girl all the way up to, to uh, LPGA Tour in the Hall of Fame. And, and most of his young ladies, he started them off with, with, with 10 finger grips. And I, I can't say this emphatically, and if I'm wrong and Derek's listened to this, he can write in and I'll, I'll correct it. But I think some of them use the, the 10 finger for most of their career. All right? And it's a good grip to use. It's a better grip to use if you're having finger issues or whatever, you know, some fingers hurting you. Like, again, if, if, if you're getting into a situation where you might be getting arthritis and, and maybe a little finger or whatever, you can, you can try the 10 finger grip. But here is the number one, one thing you have to do with any one of these three grips. And I kept it for last because it's important. You must have what I call the 3P grip. The 3P grips are palms perpendicular to the ground. So when you take your grip, if you, when you stand here, you should, if you laid the club on the ground, you should be able to have both hands and the fingers are going to be pointing to the ground. That's the 3P grip. Why? Because our hands always come back to perpendicular to the ground at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, and 6 o'clock is impact. So they must be perpendicular to the ground. And when you stand up with a, with a parallel stance, okay, and, and you have your target. Now I'm going to try to put this one at the flag, uh, as the flag being the camera. Just a little bit too much. Okay, that's pretty close. And you're standing here. The two P's are going to be, the three P's are now palms perpendicular to the ground. When they're perpendicular to the ground, they will also be perpendicular to the aiming line. Okay, that palm will be perpendicular to the aiming line. All right, and it'll be perpendicular to your torso. So that's what I call the three P's. Palms perpendicular to the ground, target, and torso. And they will return to that position at impact with the peak performance swing, which means your club face will be at impact, square to the target. Why? And I like to always say that, that uh, people always talk about you know, your, your left arm, your le left hand, your top hand, which would be left for a righty and right for a lefty. Is, is your guide hand. I use my, I use my right palm as the guide hand. Because why? My right palm is an exact mirror image of the face. Whatever my right palm does, the face does. So, and again, when you get into these, when you get into strong grips, weak grips or whatever, and you, especially opposing grips, so you might have a strong, you might have a strong top hand and a, and a weak right hand, uh, that's as almost impossible to swing, or two strong ones, it, it just, there's no way you can consistently, even remotely have a chance of anywhere near consistently getting the club face squared impact because you're defying your design of your palms always come back to perpendicular. So that's the thing. And as I said, I've said it many times, one of the best ways, and I think I did a vid daily recently where a lady said she, she found out that using uh, a, a ruler, in this case I could use my alignment arrow, get one of those little skinny rulers that they give away in all kinds of hardware stores and the big box stores, uh, those little skinny rulers, and they usually get advertising on it for a paint company or, or some other product or uh, one I got in the garage is actually a realty company. I got found it from a, a real estate agent. Got their name on it. And it's, it's even flimsier than this. But it lays nice and flat in both hands. You, if you get, try to get a strong grip, you do not have, you do not have this up against the, the back of the bottom of your palm and, and, your, and your fingers. And so that's great. So the key is, is I don't care whether you 10 finger it, interlock, overlap, but you better be palms perpendicular to the ground because that's the only correct grip to make a consistent swing and have be it have really a peak performance swing getting to impact properly is with the correct 3P grip. Pounds perpendicular to the ground, torso, and target. And you do that and you'll be making consistent swings, hitting the ball more solid and straight, whatever grip you use, so you can shoot those lower scores. That's it for the search for today on grip and I'll be talking to y'all again soon.